Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and in this video I'm going to expound a little bit on a recent video that I made regarding this tramming attachment uh, designed by Ellie out in North Carolina, but you may not understand what I'm doing here if you do not go back and watch the original one, and here it is. Check it out. Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you design modifications and tweaking that I did to this device, both with my own ideas and Ellie's ideas. He did suggest a few other things and many comments that were given that were very useful. So here we go. You may recall that I put this little spring doodad on here so that there was less likelihood of breaking the tip off. Well, people didn't like that, and I'm not sure I do myself. So all I did here was to continue, well, I, I drilled the hole all the way through this stem that Ellie made and put an extension in there, and now I can very easily raise and lower the tip the way you can do on any indicator before it has been adapted for such a use. So that is actually, if I dare so <laughs> say so myself, pretty slick. Also in the last video I suggested that you can certainly change the length here, the center to center distance, I said by drilling other holes here for the indicator. And that's still a possibility, but then a fellow would have to move this and use a screwdriver from one hole to another. But somebody said, well you fool, just put in some extra stems right here. So I did in fact drill and ream another hole with another stem right here and it's an inch and a half from this. It can't be much less if you're using a drill chuck. It could be less than an inch and a half if you're just using a collet. And you could put as many as you want along there and it's not going to affect the rigidity one bit so don't worry about that. I'm not totally sure if I talked about this but this is not the tip that Ellie had on there when he gave this to me. This is a convex tip that I had among my spare uh, tools and uh, I just like that because there's less chance of breaking the tip off in the T-slots of the milling machine. Also I like to use this little steroid indicator from time to time and that also has that type of tip on it. Quite a few viewers suggested that I need a Belleville washer in here to prevent backlash or any kind of play here at all and there is no play and I'm going to prove that to you in just a minute after I finish talking about this and we're talking here about a movement here. Well when I tightened these set screws here I told you that I pretty much pull this together with my fingers so there appears to be a little or, or no uh, play there but they said use a Belleville washer in here. Well Belleville washers, at least all the ones that I have seen, are relatively thick and stiff. So if you would want to do something like that I would suggest using a wavy washer, this is not the right size in there, rather than a Belleville washer and you can get these at any box store. Ellie suggested using O-rings in there, possibly, but I don't think you need any of that and I'll show you why right now. Now take a look at the setup here. I've got an angle plate sitting right here and it's not going to move. I have the aluminum bar on the vise, that's not going to move. I have the indicator set on zero, as you can see. Now I will attempt to move this and you can see there's just no play there at all moving in and out. I mean it's just as rigid and firm as could be. So worrying about play in there is unwarranted. Now some people will be making this with the nylon washers rather than the thrust bearings. These are thrust bearings if you watch the other video. So that there is virtually no friction there as I rotate it. And that's the whole beauty of this setup is that you can rotate the indicator. All right, do you accept that as final proof? Let me repeat now the two main points and advantages of this device which is, can be easily and cheaply be made. One is that it allows you to tram 
your bridge board head without removing the vise or probably even the work from the vise. And then the other thing is as you swing this around to the other side you can rotate the indicator so that it is easy to read. In other words it's always facing toward you and there is no need for a mirror or the operator to come around the back to read the indicator from this size which would cause a possible error and you're going to hit your head on something as well. Ellie and I disagreed a little bit because we've got eight inches here so when I swing it around we're tramming over a distance of 16 inches which allows you to set your head very accurately to zero but if you've never done it before it may be a little frustrating. I mean you could even make this longer but I don't think it serves any purpose at all. As a matter of fact I've always done my tramming probably oh well let me show you with this edge device here and that's only what I think about three inches from the center here. A total of five inches here I believe is what it is. So experts that uh, make devices and Sterrett makes one of these too for tramming this is edge do not deem it necessary to have that length. I know that Ellie is shaking his head right now but that is my feeling and of course he's entitled to his opinion and so are you. I don't know if you read through the comments in that last video but Many people, probably the majority of the comments were in this regard. Well, you fool, your Jacob's Chuck no doubt has some run out. You know, they're never very accurate even when they're new. You need to use a collet for perfect accuracy. Wrong. And I'm going to demonstrate right now why that is not true and could matter the less. <laughs> You're... Your chuck could be ten thousandths, twenty, it could be a quarter inch off and it would not make one difference. So let's take a look at what I'm going to do here. So let me illustrate this by using a half inch dowel here and I'm going to take a piece of brass shim stock that's about fifteen thousandths thick and I'm going to put it on one jaw to throw this off center. Now that's a little awkward so I'll be back in a second. Okay, can you see the shim stock? And you can see that it's not even close to running true. So I'm going to do the same thing with the tramming device. Okay, the brass shim is in place and I'm using the other stud here just for a little variety. It really doesn't matter. Let me back this off a little bit and you can see here that I'm on zero. Now I will swing this over. and it's right on zero and the head is trammed properly that is it's perfectly perpendicular now I'm getting the same reading on one side as I did on the other and again the purpose of that little demonstration is to tell you that it could matter less if your chuck or your collet is way off it just is not relevant Several commenters brought up this point and it is a very valid point. It would be very easy to break or damage your indicator if this, the tip drops significantly into the T-slot or on the edge over here. And that's of course why I'm raising it here or here. But people suggested this. And they suggested taking a gauge block, it couldn't matter what the size it is, it just doesn't matter at all, or it could just be a piece of fairly clean stock without any burrs on it, and lift up the tip as you come around and put it on the gauge block, get your reading, and then of course we would swing this around to the other side, and do exactly the same. and I'm right on zero. So that works pretty slick and of course you could use a parallel. However a parallel covers such a long distance that if there are any nicks or gouges or raised spots or chips on the table you're more likely to pick them up and cause an inaccuracy. 
Let me make another point here if you're new. What is the importance of tramming or why do we want the head to be perfectly perpendicular with the work? Well, if you were drilling, and it always serves to exaggerate, but the drill would not come down straight, but it would, let's say that it was one degree off, but I know I'm holding this much more, but in effect you would be coming down and drilling like that. Kind of plowing it. So you can see that that would uh, be a big deal for accurate work. However, for 90% of what you do in a home shop, probably within a, a half a degree is plenty good. So, if you're using a large cutter and you're milling, you're going to have uh, your cutter tilted a little bit and you can see that the leading edge is going to mill less than the trailing edge and that trailing edge always leaves that little gouge that you can see and the other thing with larger cutters like this you will actually if you're milling you will produce a concave surface and the farther you are off of, nine, of zero degrees the more apparent that will be and if you're using a mill such as this and just milling the end and you're not in tram you are milling an angle rather than a square end. Does that make any sense to you at all? In the last video I actually showed you how to tilt the head. That is I told you to loosen this knot, this knot, this knot, and this knot and once they're loose you put your wrench up here on this hex and attached to that hex, but you can't see it of course, there is a worm and a worm gear in there that, it, that acts upon it. Well, when I bought this machine, and it came from a school, the, the gear was, I forgot whether it was broken or a pin was, was sheared or what, but that's the first thing that I had to replace. And why did that happen? Well, in the school, either the kids turn this without loosening these bolts here or they let the head which is very heavy kind of drop down I'm not sure which but my buddy Roger Taylor who also was a teacher in California said the same thing in his school that he had to replace the worm so in order to prevent that from happening here is what I suggest Again, I think you can realize that this is very top heavy. You got the motor way up high and you got the weight of the pulleys and all of this here. So once these are loosened and you've got your wrench right here, you should support this. Put your hand up here and that is help it if you're raising it up. Help it a little bit. If you're going down, support it as it comes down and that will prevent the possibility of damage and should that break I don't know I, this, this didn't actually happen to us but I suppose the whole thing could swing down and do great damage to you and or the machine well as usual I beat this subject to death didn't I and as usual I would rather take 21 lashes from Captain Bly than to tilt my head or nod the head because when you do you have to go through this whole procedure that I showed you but this device makes it so much easier than uh, some of the other ways but again there are countless ways of tramming and I had planned many years ago, ah, two years ago, it's on my my list, before Ellie contacted me I was going to make a two-part video one would be entitled the poor man's method of tramming and uh, the second part would be the rich man's where I would show this and the edge device which it takes a rich man to buy this well not really it's about a hundred dollars so anyway that concludes this video I hope you enjoyed it and thank you to Ellie for his inspiration to make this and I hope some of you do and if you do leave it in the comments this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now I still prefer this over tramming the head. I just hope he doesn't throw salt water on me.